Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Someone recently told me that they thought that Roger Hodgson's voice was bad until they heard my analysis of the logical song, which I totally, totally loved. His voice and the songwriting are just perfection in that. And this made me realize that we need to dig into and show way more appreciation for Supertramp. So you're about to see a lot more of them on this channel. Let's get to it. up to the entrance. I thought it was going to be a vocal entrance. And when it was harmonica, I was like, wait, wait, oh, reassess. Blasted expectations there. That was a, that was a really fun surprise. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I also I really like this, but -ba -da. there's a swung beat that's being really heavily emphasized and it gives that up, that uplifting kind of feel to the whole thing. It's like peppy but grounded. The little Americana. <laughs> what a statement. <laughs> wonder if people playing the harmonica are very aware of the way that that playing is shaping their face. When you see somebody really good at harmonica, you see all kinds of like extra muscles that are activating in there. It, it almost feels like they're using their singing hole to just channel it into an instrument, almost like a kazoo, but it of course has its own pitch creation ability. It's, it's fascinating to me. How does mouth shaping, how does face shaping affect the tone of the harmonica? I'm curious. Let me know if you are in the live premiere chat if you've got an answer to that question. All right, the, just like, mm -hmm. lots of cheeks. What a groove. You guys, like, this voice is so splendid. <laughs> okay, it doesn't strike me as a voice that would sing, uh, I will always love you. It's not like Whitney Houston, right? It's not, it's not gonna go do some crazy runs like a Mariah Carey. It's not Pavarotti. There's not that huge roundness and depth of sound, but this voice is extremely good for what it's doing. You don't have to have like all kinds of vocal fireworks to be an incredible singer. This voice has got cut. It's got so much rhythm and a very rhythmically driven band. It's got so much clarity of enunciation for songwriting that has very, very introspective and complex, very touching lyrics. You have to get lyrics out clearly if you're going to be a lead singer of Super Tramp. It's, it's so good. And then the thing that just gets me is there's this plaintive kind of almost naive cry in it. The, his tone quality has a way of bringing emotion to me right away. 
His voice is distinctive. There are tons of people that I've read emails from, I've heard their stories, and they say, I was told I couldn't sing in choir as a kid. And a lot of times choir teachers will get frustrated because a kid has a voice that's more distinctive than the others. It doesn't blend well. This does not mean a person shouldn't sing. This means that that person is perhaps more suited for a solo career. So if you're one of those people that has a really distinctive voice, don't assume that means you shouldn't sing. Just understand maybe you have something that is extremely unique to be shared, like Roger Hodgson does. I love his immediate first sound. It's direct. It strikes my heart. Let's go back to his entrance. Ooh, hit it further. Let's go back. Oh my gosh, so rhythmic. <laughs> Moments like that where he goes, I, he adds this little extra bit often from the top. He has a little bit of um, like sharpness. He often highlights very bright sounds in his voice as well. All, it gets this little cry into the sound that I love. <laughs> Wait a second. There, uh, there are lots of people that were singing there. Was it just two? I thought that was three. I, I saw three against mics there. I need to go back and catch those. I only hear two. So I I was reading a little bit more about Super Tramp because I'm I'm like ready to go down a rabbit hole here. Okay, very much ready. And I know Rick Davies is the other person who sometimes does leads on here. So I'm definitely going to be looking at that some in the future too. And I thought we had another another person that was maybe prepped to do some vocals in there. Back one more time. And both of them have so much uh, forward and spread on that E vowel. It goes like right there. There's nothing that's marinating for a while before it comes out. It's just like direct E, almost witchy, but it works. <laughs> Back once more. I love the inserts there from the organ. It uh, It's essentially being conversational with the lead vocal, having a call and response. It's like the organ is making commentary on everything that the voice has said here. I really, I really wonder what thought process went behind this commentary. Was there like, yeah, the long way home is fun and, and awesome. Or it, every now and then it sounded like the sustained moment had perhaps some more emotion behind it. This also might have been me just adding extra layers here, overanalyzing, because sometimes it's just a funky, a funky melody or 
an expansion on rhythm that is actually happening and not a, a conversation, but it feels conversational to me. Do you wanna see? There we go. So we definitely do have three people singing in there. Yeah. Oh, the way that there was so much emotion and actual, um, <laughs> uh, it sounded like, exactly what was happening in the lyrical situation. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Whoa. Oh my gosh, these lyrics just hit in a different way. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Something about losing sanity, calamity. So it sounds like when the person gets home, it's not such a good home space. And that's why they're taking the long way home. Whoa. Even though it's got this peppy feeling, like maybe that's because we're drawing out the, the long way home and that there's actually a reluctance to be there. Whoa. What an incredible setting of these lyrics. Whoa. Heck yeah. I love the instrumental solos in Supertramp. Just so unique and fun and incredible. Um, but just, man, shout out to people who have struggles at home. A lot of times those things are unseen and so detrimental inside. There's a face that's put up outside. I know I've been there. I've done that. And uh, just if you feel unseen, know that there are other people that have been through similar situations that perhaps are going through similar situations and uh, you are not alone. Gosh, wow. The lyrical writing and the performance of it again. Pow. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this approach. They have got some of the best conversational solos, improvs out there. I love the way. You have so many instruments, different kinds of ones, unexpected ones that are talking back and forth with each other. There are elements of jazz here. There's elements of folk. There's elements of progressive rock. Like It's just blending in this incredibly brilliant way to tell a simple but very heartfelt and very human story. Wow. Okay, some more. It's amazing how such an uplifting kind of song and one that has this beautiful, simple delivery has so much weight to it at the same time. There's this incredible dichotomy and balance in their music. It's like this, it's amazing. Ugh, wow. 
I love the way that even in the instrument choices, everything has got this kind of upbeat feel. And, and yet you have this incredible complexity in what they're doing at the same time. I think you have to have simplicity, like what you're hearing in the lead vocals, to help cut through that and give a very poignant delivery. <sighs> My goodness, the way that they're shifting the harmony underneath as he's repeating this over, took the long way home over and over again. The way they're extending it is brilliant. It makes you sit with that long way home thinking, okay, what else was on that road home? What else could happen? Harmonica <laughs> whale. <laughs> So minor there. is really beautiful harmonies. It reminds me a bit of uh, Beach Boys harmonies, which I really like, by the way. That's like, I really, really enjoy the Beach Boys. Um, they're lush and the vowels are specific. They're close. Ooh. Closer up high. Wow. I uh, I want to go back to how he's doing this ending part. There's this plea and cry in the voice, but it's still simple. It, it almost feels like there's an inner voice in the character that is just crying out that, that needs some help here. Uh, I, I love the way that it's expressing emotions in something as simple as taking the long way home, the way that they've extended out this phrase so many times and put different kinds of harmonies, different instruments, uh, even have elongated the the words in different ways to give this idea of, uh, it almost feels like an escape from life that's happening. Whoa, gosh, it's so amazing how it's so complex yet delivered just, again, delivered perfectly. <laughs> Lots of nasality in that one. Comes again from above. This gives us almost like childish like quality, a plea. So much yearning in his sound. Uh, that harmonica, wow. <sighs> I love the interplay of instruments and voice in this. The way that the songwriting is just so perfectly matched with this very simple, straight, direct delivery that packs a ton of emotion as well. I am a big fan of Supertramp, and I'm gonna put up a playlist over here, some more analysis of them, including some analysis of ELO, which is one of my other happy, delightful groups. So if you want some more similar songs, check this out over here and may you fall more in love with music every day.